Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Barrows and I'm a senior physics major at St. Olaf College. I spent this summer in Cha Dong Shu's physics research lab where we studied two-dimensional van der Waals materials whose layers can peel apart due to the weak van der Waals forces between them. The project I worked on was searching for trapped excitons in twisted hexagonal boron nitride heterostructures. We constructed our samples by stacking a monolayer semiconductor, in this case a transition metal dicalcogenide, on top of two layers of insulating HBN that have been twisted relative to each other. This sample structure is interesting because if you parallel stack the HBN layers, meaning they are oriented the same way, the most energetically favorable stacking order distorts the nitrogen's 2pz orbital electrons, creating electric polarizations at the HBN interface. If the two layers of HBN are twisted relative to each other, these polarizations form a pattern like this known as a Murray pattern, where there are specific domains corresponding to polarizations that point into or out of the plane. These polarizations produce an associated potential landscape that contains domains of higher and lower electric potentials, creating an energy landscape in the TMD capable of trapping charged excitons. For context, charged excitons, also known as trions, are created when a free electron or hole binds to an exciton which is a previously bound electron hole pair. Speaking to the actual fabrication process of building a sample, the first step is to use scotch tape to peel apart layers of the crystal and make a tape. This gives good coverage of thin bulk flakes on a tape. The next step in the fab process is exfoliation. After cleaning the silicone oxide wafer our crystals will live on, we gently press the tapes into the substrate and then peel them off so some of the crystal will remain on the wafer as pictured here. Then, we search for crystal flakes that suit our purposes using a microscope and plan the position of each flake before the transfer process, where we carefully stack the flakes. Once we have finished the transfer process, Kelvin probe force microscopy, which is typically used to measure work function differences of materials, can be used to image the electric potential of the Murray landscape created by the twisted HVN. Looking at our KPFM data, you can see triangular domains indicating the twisted HBN has effectively produced a array of electric polarizations. Having verified the presence of a potential landscape generated at the HBN interface, we use photoluminescence measurements to explore how this potential affects charged excitons in our TMD. This data informs us if any trions can actually be trapped in the potential landscape. Looking at the blue plot, most emitted photons had an energy around 1.625 or 1.65 eV, indicating trion and exciton relaxation respectively. This is typical behavior when the PL measurement is not taken over a region of twisted HBN. In contrast, the measurements from the red plot were more likely taken over a region of twisted HBN, and although the exciton peak remained generally the same, the trion portion split into four different peaks. The highest energy trion peak remained at roughly 1.625 eV, however, the splitting of the other three peaks may suggest how the HBN potential has trapped these charged excitons, as evidenced by the reduced emission energy of some of the trion peaks. While this is an encouraging first result, sample defects, bubbles from the transfer process, or other issues with sample preparation could also explain the trion energy splitting we observe, so it will take further work to be sure of our results. Currently, we are working on a device that contains a double gate and will hopefully produce more promising results. This is a more complicated design, but a double gate will allow us to electron and hole dope the sample and control the number of charged excitons in the device. Furthermore, we can apply an out-of-plane electric field to the sample, which should make it possible to switch the direction of the out-of-plane polarization created by the twisted HBN. This research ultimately can assist as a new, customizable technique to study materials and aid in advancing ferroelectric memory applications for more efficient storage systems. Lastly, I want to acknowledge that this material is based on funding by the National Science Foundation through the Clean Energy to Bridge RU program, and thank both my mentor, Jordan Fonseca, and my PI, Sha Dong Shu for support throughout this project.